Eastman's time is up, but Rick Grimes' time is now. Du, 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 du. The episode's called Now Rick is Sprinting towards Alexander Greats like John Cena at WrestleMania. But the door is opened. It's not by somebody of star power. It's a bunch of no-names letting Rick in the gates of Alexandria because that's what we've got these days, all right? Alexandria season six. You're getting episodes with a few no-names and like one relevant name. And then you're, that's supposed to carry the show. Is is that is that the is that what we're left with here? Morgan and Eastman. Then you've got Enid and Glenn for an episode. You've got Aaron and Maggie underneath Alexandra. We've got to rescue Glenn. You've got Rick. Rick, yo, Rick's a very good character, right? I'll never take it away from him, but he's surrounded by bums in Alexandria. Him, Diana, Spencer, a bunch of no names that want their fucking tin apricot. Come on. Now, I know that a certain Trev's Chan to the biggest Walking Dead YouTuber on this platform, has said that his favourite season is season six, and there's two reasons for it. The first reason is the fact that it's got the most walkers, apparently, out of any other season. And it's like, right, fair enough, but who cares? The walkers aren't doing anything interesting. They're just essentially background characters, whether they're, you know, stuck down a quarry or whether they're walking down a road, or whether they're standing outside Alexandria. There's not really anything happening with the walkers. And second of all, he claims that it has the best roster of Walking Dead characters. Now, I mean, if you want to claim that, then I think there's a possibility. But let's look at all the main characters that are still here in Season 6. You could say that season six is the season with the most main characters still alive, but how many of the main characters are at their best? How many of the main characters are at their peak when it comes to season six? I would argue absolutely none. I don't think there's anybody right now who is peaked in season six or is anywhere close to their best. And if you have to think of who that person would be, I mean, it probably is Rick Grimes. Because I'd, I'd argue that he doesn't really change much, probably, from probably from like the end of season four to like Negan comes in. It's kind of like the same character that you're getting. But everybody else, I think, has went downhill massively. Even Abraham, he's, he's not been in it that long, but... Abraham in season four and five, in my opinion, shits all over season six, Abraham. Glenn is like a, a shadow of his former self. There's nothing interesting about Glenn anymore. He's so boring. It's the same old crap. All he cares about is Maggie. I mean, Glenn might care about Maggie, but we don't care about Maggie. And then just everybody else in the group, to me, it's you got Carl, who I think actually got a hell of a lot better in season four and season well maybe not as much season five he took a, he definitely took a back seat in that season but i think carl has digressed as a, a character for sure uh, yeah i look at the walking dead and yeah they might still have a lot of their main characters in season six but none of them are doing anything relevant they're not and you know 16 episode seasons right that's what the walking dead's format's been ever since season two it will extend in later seasons right but out of the 16 episodes, how many of the episodes are you getting every main character? This, From that back end of season four, right, this is where they just completely introduced these episodes where we'll only give you a couple, then we'll, we'll have them in each, ep we'll have them at like each premiere slash finale, like mid-season. I mean, you're talking 16 episodes, and I think you would struggle to name five episodes where like they all appear. Anyway, guys, we are Fog Entertainment. This is Season 6, Episode 5. But before we get into the review, just want to touch on that. I think it was cool when they originally did the solo episodes or they had the group, like, split into, like, mini groups. When they initially done that, I think it was a good idea. But I think it was a good idea because it, it was called for because you, you literally had the group split up. But now... We just see the group like splitting up on purpose and, and I think it's lost its effect. At, at the beginning, it was interesting to see how the show would go on with the big group split into like four or five small groups. But now it's like they're, they're just doing it for plot purposes. It, for me, it was all right when they did it in season four. I think it should have been a, a one-time thing. 
I don't think they need to keep doing this. No, I totally agree. And I think it affects Rick as well, because, I mean, he's the main character. I know he, he leaves in a few seasons' time, but no other TV show really does that. And also, The Walking Dead's got a problem with thinking certain characters can carry episodes. The fact of the matter is this. They can't. I've never seen a TV show go with this concept. I actually thought, yeah, back end of season four had its faults, right? But it was a unique perspective. But then every other season since then has done this. This entire season has been about the herd and how different, like, smaller groups of the main group has dealt with the, the herd. It, you know, it's getting ridiculous. Season seven's the exact same with the Saviors, and I'm sure All Out War's going to be the exact same. And I'm sure when the Whisperers come in, oh, how's these two people going to deal with the? Oh, but then the next episode's of how about this four deal with it? Anyway, let's deal with this episode. Let's deal with this review. Rick sprints through the gates, tells everyone, "All right, Daryl, Sasha, and Abraham, they're going to return, and we're all going to be safe." Dad. I was attacked. People with W's on my forehead. They attacked me. You got W's already, girl. Yeah, so we have W's attacking Rick. Rick gets back, but the others ain't back. And I guess they give up on them because we see Glenn and Nicholas. They get their names like written onto the wall. For some reason, they are presumed dead. But Abraham and Sasha and Daryl are not. Why, when they've had no communication with any of them, I don't really know. But... Glenn and Nicholas are presumed dead and the other three are not. It's almost like everybody in Alexandria seen what we seen at the end of episode three. Just to, you know, like, conveniently assume that Nicholas and Glenn were dead. How do the writers not see that? How, uh, I mean, are they thick? Have they got an AAIQ? How, how do they not see through that, the, how retarded that seems? Because, here, funny enough, the Alexandrians aren't watching the same feed that we're watching. This is real life to them. Here, depending on what continent you're in, 80 is pretty high. 80 is pretty high, but we're in the United States of America, brother. We're in a... <laughs> but we're not, but this show is... We're, we're in Washington, D.C. We're in Washington, D.C. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't understand that. I don't know why Alexandria, the community, it has just assumed that Glenn and Nicholas have passed away. They've died. Yet, they are free that they've also not heard of. You know, they just expect them to come back through the doors anytime now. I don't quite understand it. Uh, we see, though, Maggie, she uh, she doesn't believe it. She needs to go and escape. She's like, I'm going to find them. So we get her and Aaron teaming up. They go down into the sewers. Aaron seems like the only character from Alexandria that... He seems like the only character that's not, like, incompetent. He's the only one that can handle himself. Everyone else for Alexandria, you feel like if they were on their own, beyond the walls, they wouldn't have a chance of surviving. But with Aaron, I think he like fits into Rick's group. You could buy him as part of Rick's group, as a fighter in Rick's group. Now, has he got a softer side to him? And that's nothing to do with the, the gay stuff. He does, okay? He, he definitely is. I, I guess he could relate a little bit to Glenn. I guess that would be the closest person that Aaron... Actually, I would have to say you have to compare everyone from Alexandria to a member of Rick's group. Aaron's definitely Glenn. No, he is. He definitely is Glenn. He's like the, the guy who does the outside missions, but he's got the soft side. He doesn't like killing people, but he will if he has to. Yeah, and he's willing to go out with Maggie to try and find Glenn. And I mean, then you, like in the previous episode, you have Spencer, who's not even willing to go back inside Alexandria to try and protect his people. Yet you've got Aaron, who's willing to leave Alexandria to go and try and find Glenn, who, you know, is just a newly arrived person. So it kind of tells you everything you need to know about them. So, uh, yeah, they, they go into the sewers, they get attacked by two walkers, and all of a sudden Maggie can't do anything. She can't defend herself. I don't know why. Is it the, the emotional stress that she's under? I'm pregnant, Aaron. For Glenn, I'm not too sure, but she gets, like, over you know overpowered by the walkers, and Aaron has to save her. They then get to the gate, she makes a noise, and then walkers surround the gate, so that means they can't escape. So they have to go back inside Alexandria, and then later on, Aaron sees Maggie writing Glenn's name off. She's like scrubbing Glenn's name off the, I was going to call it the Hall of Fame. It's not quite, it's like the... Hall of Shame. Yeah, the memorial. They've put up the people that lived in Alexandria but are no longer with them. So she scribbles Glenn's name off, and then Aaron comes along and he does the same with Nicholas. So, I mean, at least that made a little bit of sense because it would have looked a bit phony if they scribbled off Glenn's name but left Nicholas's name up there. 
considering Glenn and Nicholas were with each other. No, absolutely, but here, at least they, they amend it, the botch on the wall. But let's talk about Spencer. He notices a few people raiding the pantry. But also, it's kind of weird how Maggie hasn't brought up the fact that Nicholas tried to kill Glenn before and that they're both missing. Surely that's something she would... Like, would that not be like... Your concern? Would she not be like, oh, crap, he went missing, and he went missing with him, and the last time those two were outside the walls, he tried to do this? I'm surprised that Maggie hasn't brought that up to anybody. Yeah. Again, is that bad writing, or is it her, you know, just... Keeping it to herself. Obeying Glenn's wish, you know, respecting Glenn's wishes where he didn't want... I think the Glenn, uh, Nicholas, mini feud slash partnership, it's a bit weird, isn't it? It ended too early. I was actually beginning, I don't know if I was beginning to like Nicholas, but he was, he was growing on me. Yeah, yeah I think, you he, know, I, he was becoming one of the better Alexandria characters. So I'm just thinking, could they not kill somebody else off? I, I think, I think there's a world for um, Nicholas to be around the Negan um, lineup and he sees what happens. Potentially, but anyway, that's me thinking out loud. But Spencer confronts the the residents because they've stole some of the apricot, they've stole the tomato sauce, they've stole the apples. But then he's like, "You have to put that back." And like, "What are you doing, Spencer?" He's like, "Brother, if it wasn't for me, they'd all been in the wall." So they all put it down. Yeah. So Spencer, you know, he redeems himself here. You're thinking, "Oh, there's Spencer, a good guy, standing up, making sure the rations are saved, making sure that everyone's being thoughtful, making sure that everyone." will have a future and that they can extend, uh, you know, the supplies at Alexandria, but then he takes them for himself. Like a big shite bag. What a hypocrite. Yeah, he gets in a fight with Diana. He's like, oh, you got them killed, brother. Uh, and then she's basically throwing stuff at him. He's she's, he's just drunk. Two job. I They're both them. shit, though. When Alexandria was under attack, she sat outside in the fucking truck. How can she be a leader? No, how is she not actually... She should be in the kitchen with Carol cooking cookies or something no, like that. how is she not gave up the leadership role? Well, no, why, why are we trying to fucking pretend that Rick is playing second fiddle to her? But it, again, it makes no it's sense. like The Walking Dead. <laughs> no, but at least... It is retarded, but because they will use the logic, well, she's a woman. Well, look at the women in work script. I, know, I mean, there can't but, be that much of an age gap between her and Carol. Yeah, but see... Yeah, look at the way Carol... Gets, yeah, but it's, it's it's dumb writing because they're all... Like, that, that's what it is. It's almost like, oh, no, D Diana's this older woman. You can't expect her to run in and save the day. Yeah, you've got Carol turning up at fucking Terminus and JSS. She was the one that saved the day. Probably saved it more than Morgan because all Morgan was doing was giving people love taps yeah, with a stick. Yeah, but look at her, show, right? Bit he, Gaelic. He was like the... Bit Aaron was going to fucking draw... Um, a W on his forehead and get a, a love tap. He probably was, his... right? But Herschel was like the consulary right? to, to Rick. But he was old. But it, it was like the wise head on old shoulders. Diana's dumb as fuck. Doesn't even offer that. Yeah, doesn't know the right. outside world. Doesn't know nothing. What fucking... Reg... What she no, but Reggie's the... the guy that did the walls. She offers fucking nothing what? to Rick. Well, I mean, she offers interviews, I guess. But is that enough to be a leader? Oh, who, who couldn't do an interview? I'm sure when Aaron's... I'm sure in his spare time when he's not getting bummed, he could fucking whip out a camera, could he not? I'm sure he could. Yeah, look, I don't think Diana should be the, I was going to say president. Yeah, I'm not saying she should be killed, right? But she shouldn't be in any form of leadership role. No, I don't think. And I think that the end of that episode, episode three, or episode two, GSS, the one where the wolves are attacking and she sat outside. After that, she should have said, look, I'm not fit to lead. I shouldn't be the leader of this place. Yeah. I mean, we know it's pretty much Rick already, but I guess, like, technically it's still Deanna. Yeah. I, I, but you know I, what? I don't think it should be Rick. Rick's an outsider. I don't think it's fair how Rick can come in and just take over. Yeah. So, therefore, who is the leader? I don't know. But Aaron? It, but it shouldn't be her. He's the guy with the most... Probably got more. Aaron's probably cojones, got... The gay cojones. A Aaron's probably got more Walker kills than the rest of Alexandria put together. No, he probably has, but uh, Jesse adds to her walker kills because she spots a sombified Betty with tanned wrists. She kills her. This is what life looks like now. We have to see it. We have to fight it because we don't, we die. Channeling her inner Rick here. Pathetic. And Just shit. So fucking forced. You know man. what? Speaking of Rick, since you brought up, we'll probably make a separate video on this, but by the time No Way Out comes along, Rick and Jesse 
are supposed to, like they are a unit they are a couple they're they're being dating romantically and and Jesse's death is supposed to have a big impact on Rick season six has done nothing to show that these two care for each other they, they did more in season five when she was still with Pete yeah if they even there had was, a kiss there, or anything there was know. more romance between an affection between them in season five in season six when they're supposed to be in a relationship they're supposed to be a couple there, there's nothing there's nothing there. I don't believe it. Oh, Rick and Jesse. Je- oh, Rick's going to be distraught when Jesse goes. I'm not seeing it. Yeah, I- I'm not seeing it, but she's trying to confess, Sa- uh, convince sorry, Sam to come down the stairs, but he stays on the second floor. <laughs> I'm not coming down where you killed the wolf. <sighs> I mean, what an idiot. Does he not think, if there's someone downstairs, does he not think it's can- it can come upstairs? I know he's a kid, like, but... But you know what? It doesn't help Carol giving this fucking child abuse and stuff, saying that she's going to tie him to a tree no, and let I, the walkers come and kill him. I mean, that's bullshit. I, I hate Carol, but at the end of this episode, so Diana sees a walker, kills one, and then pff, Rick saves her, kind of, and then that's pretty much it. I mean, that's the, that's the end of the episode. Like, there's, there's really not an op- I mean, I wish I could sit and say, oh, it was epic. And- no, nah, it was the worst episode so far. Hands down, I think. No, there's a lot of hype around, oh, there's blood leaking through the cracks in the walls. Well, is that, what is that? Is that just the walkers getting pressed against the wall? Or is that someone purposely putting blood? What is that? They're trying to make, they're trying to emphasise that. Like Rick and Tobin looked at it in a few episodes time. What is that? See, you could argue that would could be someone trying to lure the walkers in, but didn't the walkers get lured back there anyway because they made a mistake? Wasn't it the noise of the, that was the noise of the, the wolves? So like, I don't see how that, I don't see how that blood's gonna. That, what does it add? The walkers are there because of the noise from the wolves. It's not like walkers are like sharks and can smell blood from miles away. It wouldn't fucking matter if someone up and put some blood on the. Do you know what I mean though? It, it makes no sense. Yeah, I've never got it. Even back in season two, uh, eighteen miles out, Rick cuts his fucking hand and so Shane they're like rubbing it all against the fence. It's like you could just make noise. Now if JSS never happened, and then walkers just one day randomly appeared. I would be willing to accept that more, even though I'd argue I don't know how walkers have came from miles to get this blood because they've never shown anything. They've never shown that they've been able to do that in previous seasons, but you could accept that. But we know the reason the walkers are there because of the noise and the gunshots and the, and, and the wolves and the, the haul of the truck that the wolves tried to drive into Alexandria. So therefore, why is the blood necessary? I, I don't really know. Look, guys, it wasn't a great episode. For me, it was hands down the worst episode of season six and I actually think nothing happened man it was so slow and boring and uh, yeah it's a three out of ten for me and I almost feel like I'm being generous with that score yeah I'm gonna give it a three out of ten I think the problem with it's this half a season it's it's pretty much set within what a couple of days if that I mean judging by Glenn's water bottle I literally think it has been a couple of days like two days at most it's just Ah oh, man, I think basing a season around like a period of two, a half a season over a period of two days, it will either work or it'll go tits up. And I think this has went tits up. Aaron, he's bleeding. Rick's bleeding. Diana's bleeding. The fence is bleeding. This show is bleeding. It needs some new life breathed into it. But until next time, three out of ten. Peace.